Welcome back to Sound Bites Cases. This is Phil Pereira, and in this module we'll discuss cannulation of the axillary vein using ultrasound guidance. So why, you might ask, would I want to use ultrasound to cannulate the axillary vein? Well, in effect, the axillary vein is an alternative approach to cannulation of the subclavian vein on the chest wall. The axillary vein is a continuation of the brachial vein onto the chest wall and becomes a subclavian vein as it passes medially under the first rib. The axillary vein can be well visualized using ultrasound at this lateral position on the chest wall, and that's in contrast to the subclavian vein, where the presence of the bony clavicle makes imaging of the infraclavicular portion of the subclavian vein difficult. So in effect, this is a lateral puncture of the subclavian vein really into the axillary vein if you're going to use the right anatomical terminology. Ultrasound guidance of axillary vein cannulation is now well documented in the medical literature although many clinicians remain unaware that ultrasound can be integrated into this approach. Two studies document utility of ultrasound guidance for axillary vein cannulation with a decreased complication rate, and the studies are shown below, the first in 2004 and the more recent in 2012, both from our colleagues in Great Britain. In 2011, the CDC came out with some guidelines for the prevention of intravascular catheter-related infections. Their recommendations included using a subclavian vein site, if possible, rather than internal jugular vein or femoral vein sites, in adult patients to minimize the risk of infection with a non-tunneled catheter. They did say to avoid the subclavian site in hemodialysis and advanced kidney disease patients to decrease the risk of subclavian vein stenosis. They also advocated the use of ultrasound guidance, if available. Now let's review the relevant upper extremity venous anatomy that we'll need to know to perform successful cannulation of the axillary vein. Here we see the axillary vein and the axillary artery lateral on the patient's chest wall. Notice here the clavicle and the first rib. As these structures move medially, past the first rib they become the subclavian vein and artery. And we can see these arteries and veins here more medially located on the patient's chest. Notice also we see the internal jugular vein and carotid artery moving up and down the patient's neck and coming together with the subclavian vessels. We see the brachiocephalic vein, which is the confluence of all of these vessels as they move down towards the heart to become the superior vena cava. And we remember that optimally we want to place the tip of the catheter when performing central venous cannulation in the superior vena cava and not into the right atrium. Here's another anatomical image showing a perspective from a more lateral orientation on the patient's chest wall. Here we see the axillary vein and axillary artery, and notice that the normal orientation of the vein and the artery is that the artery should be superior to the vein, although occasionally we have seen some variation, and it's not unusual for the vein to be overlapped by the artery or vice versa. We see the continuation of the axillary vein and artery onto the patient's chest wall medially to become the subclavian vein and artery as the vessels pass medial to the first rib. We also see the internal jugular vein and carotid artery and the superior vena cava. To best image the axillary vein using ultrasound, we'll place the probe on the lateral chest wall. Here we see the probe applied in a longitudinal or long axis orientation over the top of the axillary vein. We can image the vessel using the long axis orientation to get a lot of information about the vessel, but we can also look in the short axis orientation by turning the probe so the probe indicator will be towards the patient's right shoulder. This will cut the vessel in cross section, making it appear like a circle. Before performance of the axillary vein cannulation, we'll want to select the right ultrasound probe for the job. For this application, we'll be using a higher frequency 10 MHz linear array probe. And because we're performing this procedure in a dynamic or real-time guidance technique, we want to put a sterile sheath or barrier over the probe so as to maintain sterile precautions throughout the procedure. Note in some of the upcoming pictures, we don't have a sterile sheath over the probe, but if we were performing this in a real procedure, we'd want to make sure that we have that sterile sheath over the probe. We'll also want to run through a pre-procedure checklist, assessing for relative contraindications to axillary vein cannulation. As it's a relatively non-compressible vessel, coagulopathy is a contraindication to axillary vein cannulation. Also, renal disease or need for dialysis would be relative contraindications to cannulation of the axillary vein. We can also run through a more extensive checklist, known as the six-point bundle, which is shown in the upper right, which emphasizes the use of maximal sterile precautions for both patient and clinician during the procedure. Now let's specifically discuss some of the ultrasound-guided approaches to axillary vein cannulation. 
The axillary vein can be visualized in both short and long axis orientations using ultrasound. Imaging of the needle during cannulation of the vein can then be performed in either orientation, and there are pluses and minuses of both of these orientations for cannulation of the vessel. I generally recommend to start in a short axis orientation to introduce the needle and initially to advance the needle down to the vein. One may successfully cannulate the vessel in short axis. However, one thing that can be very helpful is to flip the probe once the needle is under the skin into the long axis orientation to be used to visualize the needle as it approaches the vessel, as a long axis orientation shows needle depth better than the short axis orientation. So putting it all together, here's the probe position for cannulation of the axillary vein in the long axis orientation. Notice here that the needle would be placed in an orientation coming in under the lateral aspect of the probe and moving more medially. Thus we can image the full position of the needle as it moves down to the axillary vein. In the next few images, we'll also show you the placement of the probe for the short axis cannulation of the axillary vein so as to compare both long and short axis imaging. Here's a few pictures showing the orientation of the probe and the placement of the probe for cannulation of the axillary vein in a short axis orientation. Notice here that we have the probe in an up and down configuration with the indicator dot towards the patient's right shoulder or superior. Notice we're placing the needle roughly at about the midway point underneath the probe. Now there are some benefits of starting with this short axis orientation, namely that it's helpful in orienting the needle up or down superior or inferior on the patient's chest wall to best aim it towards the axillary vein. Here are some ultrasound images of the axillary vein and artery taken from the short axis view. We have the probe marker oriented towards the patient's head, thus to the left of the image is superior and to the right is inferior. We notice the axillary artery, the smaller vessel, superior or towards the left of the image. We see the larger axillary vein at about the three centimeter mark inferior or towards the right of the image. Notice towards the back of the image we can actually see the lung sliding up and down as the patient breathes at about the five centimeter mark. Thus it's very important to cannulate the vessel carefully and not to pass the needle deep past the axillary vein or artery to cause an inadvertent pneumothorax. Here's another image of the axillary artery and vein taken from a short axis configuration. Again we have the probe marker indicator towards the patient's head, superior to the left, inferior to the right. Thus we see the smaller axillary artery to the left or superior and the larger axillary vein inferior toward the right of the image. Notice that as we apply probe pressure down onto the patient's chest wall, we can actually compress the axillary vein and this is one way of telling vein from artery as normally the vein should compress as long as there's no thrombus inside it and the artery will stay open. We can see the lungs sliding towards the deeper aspect of the image. In this ultrasound image, again taken from a short axis configuration, we'll use color flow Doppler to further differentiate the axillary artery from the axillary vein. We note again that superior is to the left and inferior is to the right, and we can see the smaller axillary artery with pulsations indicating arterial flow within the lumen. Notice here we also see phasic respiratory flow within the axillary vein corresponding to inhalation and exhalation by the patient. That's another way of differentiating the axillary artery from the axillary vein. Here are some images showing the appropriate positioning of the probe for long axis cannulation of the axillary vein. Again, we notice that we have a high frequency linear array probe positioned over the lateral chest wall directly over the axillary vein. We have the needle coming in under the long axis of the probe. Now, I like to have the probe positioned so that the marker on the probe is oriented lateral. Thus, the needle will come in underneath the indicator and progress directly underneath the probe as it courses from the skin down to the axillary vein. And it's important to keep the needle in plane underneath the probe at all times so that it can be visualized as it goes down to the vessel. Here's a long axis ultrasound image of the axillary vein as it courses from lateral to the left of the image to medial to the right of the image. Notice that the axillary vein appears as a tubular structure at about the three centimeter mark. Now let's take a look at the axillary artery using B-mode or grayscale sonography. We can see the axillary artery arching from lateral to medial across the patient's chest wall and we note the pulsations within the lumen indicative of an arterial structure. We can also see the thoracoacromial trunk coming off medially off the axillary artery. Next we'll use color flow Doppler to further differentiate venous structures from arterial. This would be the axillary vein and we can tell this as it does not have that constant arterial pulsations within the lumen.
Notice that it, rather it has the phasic respiratory variation of flow within its lumen that is indicative of a venous structure. We can also see the thoracochromial trunk coming off medially. Let's contrast that last ultrasound clip with this one showing the axillary artery using Color Power Flow Doppler. Color Power Flow Doppler shows amplitude of flow and we can see that fast flow is very yellow. We can see the faster flow within the inner part of the lumen of the vessel. But notice that we have here the characteristic arterial pulsations to differentiate from venous pulsations. Now let's discuss the micropuncture technique for central venous cannulation. The micropuncture technique has a lot of advocates when talking about cannulation of the axillary vein as it utilizes a smaller 21 gauge needle for the initial puncture of the axillary vein. This is in contrast to a traditional central line kit which uses an 18 gauge needle, a much larger needle for that initial vessel cannulation. One can then use a smaller 21 gauge needle to cannulate the vessel and place a guide wire into the vessel. A larger catheter can then be inserted over the guide wire into the vessel. Using these smaller diameter needles is potentially safer for deeper puncture of vessels like the axillary vein to avoid potential complications. In this video clip, we'll watch cannulation of a vessel using the short axis approach. This is a phantom which simulates the human body, and we can see that as we place the probe in the short axis orientation, the vessel will appear as a circle end on. Notice here that we can see the echogenic tip of the needle coming down to the vessel, permeating the anterior wall, and then entering into the lumen of the vessel. So the short axis plane allows better lateral guide of the needle path and is a good starting position for cannulation of an axillary vein. In this video clip, we'll use the long axis approach for cannulation of a central vein. Here we're using some new technology known as MBE technology that is on a lot of the Sonocyte machines. What we see here is the tip of the needle is much more echogenic. We aim the needle towards the dotted line, which is coming from right to left on the image here. Now let's watch the needle coming in from left to right, and we can see that as the needle is in plane with the probe in the long axis approach, we can see the full extent of the needle as it travels from superficial down to permeate the anterior wall of the vessel and enter into the vessel lumen. Thus the long axis plane allows a much better guide to needle depth and allows you to gauge where the tip of the needle is at all times. Thus I generally start with a short axis approach and then flip to long axis. In this video clip, we'll look at a real-time axillary vein cannulation in a real patient. Here we see the needle coming down from left to right. We're using the long axis view. Notice that the images are not quite as crisp because the probe is slightly off axis to the vessel. But what we can see here is the tip of the needle, as shown by the small arrow, coming down, pushing down on that anterior wall of the axillary vein, and then entering into the vessel lumen. So in this case, we were able to successfully cannulate the axillary vein, although the images are not quite as clear as in the phantom. And this is one pitfall from using the long axis approach that you must be completely in plane with the needle throughout its entire path down to the vessel. Here's another clip in the long axis orientation showing a successful cannulation of an axillary vein. We can see here the needle pushing down on that anterior wall and then entering into the vessel lumen. Now one potential pitfall is that occasionally the vessel can be pushed down the anterior wall content towards the posterior wall as you push the needle down. So have patience and occasionally a slight pullback with the needle will loosen that tissue and allow you to free the needle tip within the vessel lumen. But again, the teaching point here is that the long axis view is great for assessment of needle depth at all times. Another use of ultrasound and the long axis technique which I find very helpful is to assess that the guide wire is safely within the position within the lumen of the axillary vein. Here we note the needle coming down from left to right and we can see the guide wire passing through the tip of the needle, moving down the axillary vein, down towards the superior vena cava. This can be very helpful in assessing that the guide wire is indeed safely within the axillary vein prior to placement of the plastic catheter. While standard practice would dictate that after placement of a central line, one would obtain a chest radiograph to look for the placement of the tip of the catheter in the superior vena cava, a quick and easy way of assessing that the catheter is indeed inside the superior vena cava is to use a saline flush. Here we're flushing the saline into the catheter and we can note the presence of bubbles within the right side of the heart indicating that the catheter is indeed within the vessel lumen. So a quick and easy way right at the bedside prior to obtaining a chest radiograph. In conclusion, thanks for joining me for the Sound Bites module going over ultrasound guided approaches to axillary vein cannulation. Ultrasound guidance of axillary vein cannulation is now well supported in the medical literature and in fact the CDC guidelines from 2011 
advocate placement of central lines within the axillary and subclavian veins to lower the incidence of bloodstream-associated infections. As we discussed, the micropuncture technique, using a smaller needle for the initial cannulation of the axillary vein, can be very helpful for this approach. We can then place a guide wire and larger catheters into the vessel more safely. So clinicians should strongly consider this alternative approach, using ultrasound-guided approaches into the axillary vein, when determining the location for central venous catheter placement in their patients. So I hope to see you back as Soundbites continues.